So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is um, pair our reader with the um, with the phone or the tablet that we're working with. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to navigate to your settings. So um, you can open up your app tray um, or however your apps are sorted and then just go to this settings option here. From settings, we're going to select Bluetooth. And then this is going to give us our list of paired devices that we currently have, as well as our, sorry, one second here. Just saving some bandwidth. So what it's going to give you is your, your list of currently paired devices as well as available devices to pair uh, once you hit that search button down at the bottom. So I'm just going to make sure that my reader is on. And I'm going to hit search and it's going to look for my available devices. It should pull up your TSL reader. So your TSL reader, um, the serial number backwards will be your available device. Um, so it's just your the serial number on the top of the device um, in reverse order will be the available device you can find. So I'm just going to tap on that. It's going to start pairing. And then it's going to go into my paired devices. So this is not going to connect right away. Um, it actually has to connect through the app uh, to be able to use. So. What we're going to do from here is I'm just going to go back to my InfoChip app now. And on my assets screen, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to go to manage Bluetooth. So from here, um, I can change the output power level of the device I'm connecting to. Uh, as well as this is the screen you're going to go to to connect your device. Um, so once you launch the Manage Bluetooth screen, you're going to tap on the Connect Directly to Paired Reader option. So Manage Bluetooth, Connect Directly to a Paired Reader. And it should give you the reader connected option at the bottom there, if the TSL is the only reader you currently have paired to your device. If it doesn't, what's going to pop up is there's going to be a little uh, white box with a gray background. Uh, it'll give you a list of all of the things that are paired to your device currently. And then all you have to do is just tap on the 1128 option, and that's what's going to connect the reader directly to your device. So now that we're connected, uh, we can start going through kind of how to do some of the basic functions with the TSL reader in the Android app. So what we're going to do is first thing is we're just going to do a, a quick asset search. Um, this is very easy to do. You don't have to tap any buttons or anything like that in the app. Uh, the only thing you need to do is just pull the trigger on the device itself um, within reasonable range of the, of the chip itself. You should hear a beep noise and it'll search for that asset and pull it up on your screen. I can do that with any number of chips here. I can just go from tag to tag and pull them up one by one. The next thing you can do is on an asset edit, we can actually assign a chip ID to it. So what I can do here is I'm just going to clear out my search. I'm going to find an asset to assign a chip to. Let's use this hydraulic hose as an example. I'm going to tap the pencil at the top to edit the asset. Then I'm going to tap the pencil beside the chip ID. And now I'm going to scan my chip ID. Now, it's going to give me an error saying that this is already assigned to an asset. But same as before, you just need to navigate to your edit chip ID screen, pull the trigger to scan the chip, and it'll automatically assign to the asset. Let me see if I've got another chip down here I can use. Nope, seems like everything I've got is already assigned. So 
So the same thing goes for a single asset as well. So if I go under the three dots and I go create asset, same thing. I'm just going to tap that pencil icon beside the chip ID, scan the tag that I want to associate to the asset, and it's going to automatically assign to that piece of equipment. And then I can continue with the rest of my asset create. Now we're going to get into kind of the 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 um, most important functions that we use the TSL reader for, which is uh, bulk scanning assets um, to perform bulk operations on them. So 99% um, of the time, uh, you're not going to be using this for kind of single uh, tag scans. It's going to be scanning multiple tags, pulling them up in a list, and and doing something with that large list of assets. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the select screen because that kind of gives us uh, the opportunity to um, do a number of different things once we've built uh, what I call a pick list on our mobile app. Um, so from the bulk select screen, all we do is kind of hold the trigger and scan over top of all of our assets. And what we're going to see is it gives you a number in that bottom uh, left corner just above the keyboard where it tells you how many chips you've scanned. So I have three tags in front of me at my desk here, and it says that I've got three uh, list entry of three. So that means that I've scanned all the tags that I currently have. Um, you can edit this list. So if you scan a piece of equipment that you don't necessarily need, you can just hit the X to remove that from the, from the list. You can also go back in and then rescan that tag and it'll get re-added to the list. Let's see here. I'm going to go exit, clear selection. Let's reselect those tags that we're working with. There we go. Alrighty. So now we're going to go through our list of bulk actions. So in the top right hand corner again, we're going to tap those three dots. It kind of gives us our list of things that we want to do with those pieces of equipment. So we have move, uh, UTI, which is an unable to inspect, uh, scrap, transfer, and fill form. So move would be if I wanted to change the location of all of these assets to the same location within the same customer. So for me, I have my own customer selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap those three dots, hit move. And it's going to ask me to choose a new location. So I'm going to move all of these assets to the Beaumont location. It's going to give me a um, notification that it successfully moved all of those assets. And then it's going to show all of that, those new locations in the bottom right hand corner of, or bottom left hand corner, sorry, of each box in the um, bulk select list for each asset. You kind of see Beaumont there in the corner. So the next thing we're going to do, so UTI and unable to inspect, this is more for um, if you can't find a group of assets, you can add um, assets to this bulk select screen without scanning the tags. Um, this would just be if you're out doing an inspection at the very end, you searched for all of the assets that um, you weren't able to find, uh, haven't been recently inspected, uh, you could add them all to this screen and just mark them all as unable to inspect. Um, so we're going to go right to the next one here, which is scrap. So if you found a bunch of pieces of equipment that needed to be scrapped, taken out of the system because they're they're broken or unable to be used anymore, um, you can just tap the scrap option. It'll ask you to fill out the um, scrap inspection form, who was performed by, what the order number was under, um, and then it'll just mark it as inspection instruction scrap. And then you can add any comments on those pieces of equipment. Uh, and then basically once you hit save, it'll mark all of those pieces of equipment as scrapped and take them out of your active asset list. So just because we're still working with them, I'm going to hit cancel here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to 
do a transfer. So if I had multiple customers selected, um, what I could do is I could transfer these assets from one customer to another. So if you were working in a warehouse, for example, um, and you had a bunch of pieces of equipment that were assigned to um, your client ID uh, or your, um, your account and you needed to move them to a customer's, that's what you would use the transfer function for. So if I tap on transfer, it's gonna ask me to choose a new owner. So I would choose an owner under my list here. I could choose OEM manufacturer, choose a location to send them to. I'm gonna send it to site one and then hit save. So now we can see that they've moved to the new customer and the new location there. So those assets have been transferred. Again, an important part about this is all of these changes will just be on the device until you hit sync. Uh, once you hit sync, they'll be uploaded to the online platform uh, and all the changes will permeate to the rest of the mobile devices once they sync and pull that new information down. And I think the most important, um, most important one that's on here is the uh, fill form option. So if I open up my menu here and I tap on fill form, I can actually choose a form to fill out on all of these assets. Now, important thing to know about this is um, if you choose assets from different categories, um, it's going to give you the full list of all of the inspections you have. Um, however, if you scan assets that only belong to one category, so if you only, um, if you only scan assets for uh, chain sling, for an example, um, only your chain sling defaulted forms would show up. Um, so kind of important to keep in mind uh, just to kind of speed up your process. You're not scrolling through here trying to find um, inspections one by one. So what we're gonna do for all of these pieces of equipment, uh, just because they're different, is we're gonna choose our CERTA compliance. And then it's gonna load our fill form screen. So exactly like you would fill form on the Android app before, um, we're just gonna go through the same thing, put in your order number, your PO number, answer any of the tasks you have in the, in the list there. So we're gonna choose our inspection instruction as NA, certification result as a pass, any comments we need to put in here, uh, this inspection was performed in bulk just as an example. You can backdate the completed date if you need to, and then once you're done, you're just gonna hit save up at the top. All right, so we're about to save this operation for multiple items, we hit yes. And it'll save that new inspection on our pieces of equipment. So now if I exit and I search for those assets, Oh, I won't pull them up because they're under a different owner. Let's do this. So I'm just gonna sync to upload that new data. And it's gonna download that new data back to the device. And then once our sync is complete, we can go back to the assets screen. Search and pull up those new assets that we just transferred over. All right, and because we just did that inspection on them, those assets are gonna come up as blue, just so that we know that we've already done an inspection on them and that we don't need to touch that piece of equipment again during this inspection. So the last thing that I'm gonna uh, demonstrate here is it's on a uh, different screen, but it's disassociating chip IDs. So if you're out in the field and you have a bunch of scrapped pieces of equipment um, that you want to reuse those tags on, um, I know that some customers will reuse tags. Um, so what we can do is we can tap the three dots in the top right and go to the remove chips option. 
from there, it's going to pull up our scan screen again. I'm going to go across and scan my tags. It's going to pull up the three chip IDs that I uh, have been working with so far. Once I'm ready to go, I just hit continue. And then it will have successfully removed the scan chip IDs from their assets. I can then go exit, go back to the assets screen, go to my sync screen, sync the device, and now it's going to remove those tags from that, those pieces of equipment. So if I go back into the assets screen once this is done syncing, it's going to Sorry, it's not going to pull up any assets and it's going to say that those um, chip IDs are unassigned. Sorry, we lost the screen share there for a second. I think my sync crashed there. I think I lost internet connection completely. So I'm just gonna let that sink through, but that's all of our uh, training for today. Uh, I'm gonna unmute the call now just to see if anybody has any questions, anything I can go over again. And I'm just gonna stop the recording.